जय श्री माता जी ऑनलाइन उपस्थित सभी सहयोगी भाई बहनों का ध्यान सत्र में हार्दिक स्वागत है नमस्कार करके कलेक्टिव बंधन लेते हैं तीन महामंत्र तत्पश्चात श्री गणेश मंत्र का उच्चारण करते हैं Yeah. 
चित्त को सहस्त्रार चक्र पे स्थिर रखते हैं प्रार्थना करते हैं परम पूज्य माता जी कृपा कर हमारे आत्म साक्षात्कार को दृढ़ कर हमें एक आदर्श सहयोगी बनाइए इसी अवस्था में कुछ क्षण ध्यान में बैठे रहेंगे अभी हम श्री माता जी की अमृत वाणी को ग्रहण करते हैं टुडे इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डे इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ स्पिरिचुअलिटी द एकादश रुद्रा इनकारनेशन हैज बीन प्रोफेसाइज्ड by every prophet that the ekadasha avatara will be coming and it will destroy all the negativity all the anti god activities ekadasha <coughs> principle actually is built in void because when the saints wanted to cross the ocean of illusion through their meditation they were hindered troubled tortured and slaughtered by negative forces these negative forces came up through the feelings of human beings when human beings feel <coughs> they saw other people who were 
so much better than them. And they saw that they are nowhere compared to many other human beings. Or sometimes out of anger and temper, the villainous temperament grew into them. And then it formed this anti-God negativity in the void. So void has given actually the villainy to come into form. As you see in Sahaja Yoga, we must have seen it many a times that when you go to a wrong guru or to a wrong person or you do unauthorized worshipping, your left void catches. So in the left void, all those destructive forces acted. Also, in the process of evolution, there were many plants, animals, who were destroyed because they, they, were, they were not in the center, because they were egoistical, some were cunning, some were too big, some were too small. And they were all thrown out. And when they were thrown out, they felt that they must react. So they went into the collective subconscious and came as subtler entities to harm the people who were ascending. Like we see these days viruses that attack us. These are the plants which have gone out of circulation. After some time you will find tobacco will go out of circulation. Many drugs will go out of circulation. All these can form a kind of anti-growth, anti-development, anti-freedom forces within ourselves. So in the area of void, these horrible negative forces were formed. In the same way, many human beings who were born and tried to assert their ego went into egoistical processes and thought that they can control people, they can have their domain over all the human beings, they can overpower the whole world. All such people form a very powerful institutions in the history. And today also there are many such forces coming into existence. These forces are building and destroying every moment. They are building into our void area and then they are destroyed. These people, when they 
come from the right side, from the right void, we call them as supraconscious. And those who come from the left side, we call them as the subconscious entities. All these entities do exist. As human beings are the image of God, as in the collective subconscious of God Almighty and also in the supraconscious of God Almighty. These forces still remain till they go to hell. In the same way in us also, in human beings also, these forces exist and they try to overpower us. It's very remarkable that we had this puja in Austria because in the geography of this world, Europe is the void and in that Austria is the one where we should have anti-negative forces built up to fight the negative forces. It's such a right place to have this puja and I'm really thankful to all the surgeries who have chosen this place for a Kadashudra Puja. In the modern times, as we see today, these forces are acting in very subtler manner, in a manner that human beings cannot understand. and they are driven into it. <coughs> if you see the way we are drifting from reality, the way we are getting tempted by superficial nonsensical things, the way we have horrible diseases waiting at our doorsteps, we realize that we are standing on the verge of falling into a maya from where we may ne never rise, we may never come up. So we have to understand what is within us which can destroy forever these anti-development anti-evolutionary, anti-constructive temperament of the nature. In the nature, if you see, everything circulates in a very regular manner. For example, in the winter time, the leaves have to fall down because the nitrogen of the leaves has to go into the Mother Earth to nourish the trees. Moreover, the Mother Earth must get sun's rays. So there should be no leaves and the sun's rays can penetrate into the Mother Earth to nourish her. Then the trees, when they are nourished, they again become green and lush so that they receive the sun's light and make chlorophyll out of them. Also, they suck in the water from the Mother Earth and throw them in the atmosphere 
act as catalyst for the rain to come. When the rain comes during the rainy season, they are again nourished with water. The life again they lose all their leaves and the whole circle goes on in a beautiful manner. There is no reversion, it's just a continuous circle going in a very beautiful manner to create and recreate. But with the interference of man, nature gets disturbed. Also, you can enhance the nature. You can save the nature's destruction, which could be natural also. But when you get your realization? When you get your realization, then with your vibrations, you can save all natural things that are decaying under the modern influence. So, first of all, we see the effect of realization, how it acts as a Kadasharut. It destroys the negative forces which are trying to destroy the nature. One day I am sure you all will evolve to such a state that even your glance is sufficient to make the trees grow, to make the fruit sweet, to make the flowers fragrant. That's possible because our growth is showing results. Slowly, slowly, it's showing results because you should not be stunned, you should not be shocked, so that you can see for yourself what you are and what you are achieving. But to allow this force within us to grow, first of all, we should be very introspective. We should try to see ourselves what is happening to us. We must watch our steps. Are we moving towards our construction or towards our destruction? What are we doing? This is a force which is within us. It's so powerful, it's so very powerful that not only in nature, but also in human beings it acts. It acts in a way that you are shocked and surprised. There's a gentleman whom I had given realization, he was dedicated, but he is not in a place where he can come to surgery. And some people tried to trouble him very much. And he told me they all met with an accident and all of them are now lying in the hospital. So I said, I didn't do anything. <laughs> By their own doings, they have crossed the limits. And if you cross the limits of goodness, naturally you go something what we call as evil. And if you fall into the ditches of evil, you have to suffer. But also it acts on surgeries. I have known of a surgery who tried to be a little funny about money. I didn't think that he should be punished. I never thought of such a thing that he should be punished really. But they acted, his own forces acted against him. And he got so sick, so very sick, 
that in my presence is to just shake like a dried leaf. I never even told him that I know what you are doing. In Sahaja Yoga when you enter, you have to know that slowly and steadily you are climbing up a very steep road because it has to be very quick. So the rise is very steep. And when you are climbing up that rise, you have to know if you don't go further, you will slip down. But if you move sideways, you will fall down. You may say that, Mother, we are moving sideways, so there is a movement. Because you are falling down also, one may feel the movement. That is the movement of destruction. So you must have proper discretion about yourself. Are we ascending or descending? Are we losing our steps? Are we going higher in our steps? Which sometimes we do not realize that we are amidst the first possible negativity in the history of this universe. In the older times there would be only one Rakshasa at a time one had to deal with. It was so easy to deal with one Rakshasa. But to deal with so many of them already needs a lot of work. But the worst part about it is that in the modern times these Rakshasas have entered into the brains of people. Because of their teachings, because of their delusions, people have accepted them. And these people are my children. They are seekers. They are seekers of truth. It's like people using children for a ransom. They put the children before me and I don't know what to do. If I try to kill the devils, then the children are in front. So which is the best way is to destroy in modern times. Of course, they can be killed, they can die. But how am I to save the people whom they have polluted, whom they have wronged? It's a very, very difficult and very delicate work. For that, this only way is to bring them to a point where they get completely exposed, they are debased and the whole world knows who are they, how they look like. So instead of fighting them from outside or just asking Yama to go and kill them, it's best is to make their own being caught into the web of a Kadashadudra so that they are exposed to people by their misdeed. That is the advantage, I should say, a part of the ugly game of falsehood. Falsehood always gets exposed. You can see writ large on their faces, their hypocrisy, their evil intentions and their satanic schemes. As I said that modern times are the worst for these attacks, we have to be more alert, more aware, more understanding. As such of you all are very well equipped. 
but we all the time forget that we have got our vibrations, that we have got a new awareness of vibrations, we have got vibratory awareness. And these vibratory awareness are a kind of a messenger which is absolute, which communicates and which tells us what's wrong with others, what's wrong with us. But if you start taking your decision through your mental, emotional uh, enterprises, then be sure that you'll be misguided. Because all these endeavors are one-sided. Like a mental projection goes like this in a linear way, falls upon you. And also a emotional one does the same. Even the physical is just the same. But when you start seeing through the vibrations, what do you do? Is to ask your spirit to communicate to you. And the spirit is the absolute knowledge. So you do not succumb to your conditioning or to your ego or to any other training or any other guru but yourself. So it is very important for all of you to understand that we are not going to take any decision on our mental level but on our vibrations. Many a people think that if I say something about someone, maybe because they have reported it to me. But supposing if I am the source of all the vibrations, what is there for me to get reported? Why should anybody report to me? If they want to report, they may, but I know what exactly is the situation. Once in Rauri, I was waiting in the guest house and about five, six professors came on their bikes. Came and told me, Mother, we have come to warn you about a particular gentleman. I said, who is this gentleman? They gave the name of this gentleman. I said, you have to be very careful, he's a politician. I said, all right, that's all you know about him? He said, yes. So you have to be very careful. I said, now I'll tell you about him. That this man has not married his wife. She's the wife of somebody else and he has eloped with this woman. And the child is his. But this lady was raped by him, that's how he's got the child. When I started telling, you know, they all started raising their eyebrows and opening their eyes. I said, Mother, how do you know? I said, you are fine. Whatever I'm saying, is it true or not? They were completely stunned. They went back and then reported to me that, Mother, it's surprising what you said was the truth. So on vibrations, you can know everything. But those who try to decide things without vibrations can make mistakes till you reach a certain stage where you don't have to spread your hands to ask, just you know. But to go to that stage, you have to first of all surrender your discretion to vibrations. Now, some people don't have proper vibrations. Maybe their vishuddhis are bad. They should take proper care of their vishuddhis. Even then, if they don't have some physical problem on the vishuddhi, they can feel it within themselves. What chakras are catching? What is happening to this gentleman? Normally, because we are in modern times, the people who are possessed appear more beautiful than the people who are not possessed. Once we had a lady who came to us in our program, she was completely possessed. 
thin like a bean stalk, absolutely. And everybody, that was the beginning of Sahaja Yoga, felt that what a beautiful woman has come. I told them to keep her out of the hall for the time being. They couldn't understand. When she got cured and she looks very different now, to me she is very beautiful. The beauty that was seen at that time must be the camouflage of the negativity that people saw. Like as you see these cinema actresses, cinema actors and some of the clowns who move as presidents, this, that, you can see it large on their faces how horrid they are. But unless and until you yourself are of that level and sincere, you won't be able to make it out. Today what we are doing is to awaken within us this Ekadasha Rudra force, which will help you to fight your own negativity and fight the negativity of the whole world. Now we have so many hands so many people with different, what we call them, ayudha, means the weapons. All these weapons are with you. They are within you. And you can definitely use them. But first you must know what weapons you are carrying and how to use them. There is so much blind faith, there is so much of wrong ideas, so much of organizational uh, fortresses they have built. All kinds of nonsensical things are going on in this world. But they will all be finished. Nobody will know anything about them except that they might know as some villainous creatures on this earth. Ultimately the living will exist. We have to know that we know the living force and we have to be very sure about it and we have to be proud about it that we know what is the living force. Then this Ekadasha Rudra within us becomes very strong. Anybody who tries to trouble you will have a nice punch. Any organization which tries to subdue Sahaja Yoga or in any, any way how it will have a nice time. Like you know I went for Muff Griffin show and he misbehaved. Next week that show was closed up, no more. In India there was a newspaper which tried to make a funny article out of me. The newspaper was closed up for months together. Just it happens. I don't say anything of the kind, but the way things happen is very surprising. How this Ekadash is now active. Also, the most significant thing is that this Ekadasha is going to act only in Kali Yoga, in these modern times. Earlier, it was not going to act because there was hardly one uh, guru who is today a guru, must have been a sitan last time. Only one horrible uh, rakshasa there. So it was very easy to kill. To kill Kansa, it took no time for Sri Krishna or to kill Ravana. It took no time for Sri Rama. And once they are killed, the whole thing becomes clean start. But here they are like mosquitoes. So many of them, one after the other, there is no end to it. And they have entered also into the being of human beings, giving them diseases, all kinds of problems and tortures. So the problem is much more deeper and very, very complicated. That is why the Ekadasha Rudra, which has got eleven destroying powers, 
We say that there are ten directions, you can say. And this is the eleventh. So ten from outside, one from inside. All these eleven forces can act onto anyone who tries to hamper the progress of Sahaja Yoga or even to say something against me or against you. Anybody who tries to trouble you, it will act. On the physical level, it appears on your forehead here. The Ekadasha Rudra shows on your forehead and you get a swelling over here. Some people you must have seen have a fur over here and a huge big thing coming up. Mostly the cancer patient, if you see them, they have from left, it rises to the right side, bite a lot, bump there uh, on the right hand side. And there are some who have got on the left hand side. So the, from the left hand side it rises, goes to the right side, and the one which rises from the right side goes to the left. So the more dangerous ones are which go to the right side, because they are the ones who are very sly, which we cannot see, which are hiding, which can harm you very much. So all these horrible things that are acting today can be completely destroyed if we develop our Ekadasha Rudra within ourselves. They are not so powerful. One surgery can kill thousands of them. Why? They cannot harm even one. So they are really powerless before you. They have no way of torturing you. In case you are a powerful person, they will all disappear and disappear forever. I remember once there were three surgeons in India who used to go by a particular road in the village. So one lady got possessed and she started doing ho, 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 ho like that. So they said, why are you here? She said, I, we are here in this lady to tell you that please tell these three surgeries not to go by the road because now we have run away from all the villages and we are just residing in that area. And if the surgeries go through that also the whole night, we'll be jumping around. So better ask these three surgeries not to come that way, so that at least we'll have some place to decide. These are, as I told you, born out of the circulation of evolution. So these are dead, dead people. And these dead people can, in their subtle bodies, enter into us and form entities. And those entities can grab us and can possess us. Such possessed people look quite normal. As I was saying today, homosexuality, uh, over-sexuality, no sexuality, uh, then we can say uh, uh, no aesthetics or too much of art artistic uh, tendencies, then we can say too much of eating and hunger or eating nothing at all, uh, fasting, then not afraid of anyone, what's wrong? For everything, what's wrong? Not afraid of God or afraid of even an ant. Then there are people who feel guilty all the time or those who make others feel guilty as if that other person is good for nothing. 
we do. Plus we have another kind who are very, very cruel, that they can entrap people, can make their own slaves, can work out anything horrible, wars, by their own talking. And there are others who subjugate themselves to these evil people and accept their dominance and try to destroy other people in the glory of these dominating personalities. Then comes the area of Sahaja Yoga, where nobody can enter it. You are perfectly happy there. Ekadashas are standing around you on your forehead to look after that area. They are watching you, they are guards, and nobody can harm you. You are very nicely settled down there in the Sastrava, and nothing can touch you, nothing can even bring a slur on you. They are very alert, and they have many facets. Each deity has many facets. And all these facets are all the time throwing light in that area so that there is no intruder to enter in. This is what you have got within yourself. And when anybody tries to enter into this area of Sahasrara, immediately can react and can harm the other man to such an extent that you are yourself amazed and you don't know how it has happened. But to develop this force, we have to meditate with sincerity, with understanding, not with just words before the photograph to say whether I surrender myself to you, this. Sincerely, because the deities know who is sincere, who is innate, who is the one who is really trying to rise and ascend. It is a struggle, in a way. It is a struggle, but it is not the struggle which will not bring you any fruits. Otherwise, all other struggles give you no fruits. But this struggle is so simple and so already explained and worked out that you don't have to worry too much. So today we have to invite all these forces of Ekadasha to destroy the negativity in this Kaliyuga. Completely. Also to pray that if there is any negativity within us, it should be destroyed. If there is any negativity against Sahaja Yoga, it should be destroyed. Anywhere in our character and in our understanding, if there is any negativity, it should be destroyed. This is today's message for you. Or a condition. May God bless. निशब्द ध्यान में बैठते हैं।
दोनों हाथों को जोड़कर श्री जी के श्री चरणों में प्रार्थना अर्पित करते हैं परम पूज्य श्री जी आज का यह सामूहिक ध्यान हम आपके श्री चरणों में समर्पित करते हैं श्री जी संपूर्ण जग में विश्व निर्मला धर्म स्थापन करने हेतु कृपा कर आप हमें सहयोग प्रचार प्रसार का एक शुद्ध और सशक्त माध्यम बनाइए परम पूज्य माता जी कृपा कर हमारी सभी प्रार्थनाओं को स्वीकार कर हमें आशीर्वादित कीजिए नमस्कार कर कलेक्टिव बंधन लेते हैं आज का ध्यान केंद्र यहीं पे संपन्न होता है आप सबका हृदय से धन्यवाद जय माता जी